what to do with our 16-year-olds when they break the law. How is North Carolina an outlier at this time? Well, uh, it's uh, really interesting. North Carolina and New York are the only two states where 16-year-olds are considered adults. However, in New York, they have what's called a reverse waiver provision that for certain 16-year-olds, uh, the court can say, because they're immature, because it wasn't a, too uh, severe an offense, they can send them to the juvenile system. So North Carolina is really the only state where all 16-year-olds uh, go into the adult system, whether that's adult probation or adult prisons. And uh, what we've seen from the research is the juvenile justice system for uh, those this age is really much more effective in rehabilitating. They fo the juvenile system focuses a lot more on strengthening the family, which is really the key uh, for 16-year-olds. And um, in juvenile facilities, uh, these youngsters are much safer, less likely to be uh, raped or assaulted. Now, one of the reasons that, uh, that this is of interest is because 16-year-olds, once they finish any sentence they'll get in the court system or the juvenile justice system, are likely to be back out on the streets? Well, that's right. I mean, you know, obviously, if we talk about somebody who's serving life without parole for you know, a, a homicide or something like that. We don't want to spend really a dollar on rehabilitating them, but we're talking about 16-year-olds, uh, who, which, whichever system they go to, they're going to be back within several years while they're still in their prime crime-committing years. And so long-term, we know that if a, a youth becomes a career criminal uh, over their whole lifetime, the cost to victims and, and taxpayers is 2 to $3 million. So we have a big stake in turning around uh, these wayward youths. And um, uh, the research clearly indicates that uh, the juvenile system is best situated to do that.